Reclaim the dream. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun, fester like a sore and then run? Or does it stink like rotten meat, crust and sugar over like a syrup is sweeter? Maybe it sags like a heavy load, or does it just explode? Those words, of course, come from Langston Hughes, a colleague of Paul Lawrence Dunbar during the Harlem Renaissance. What happens to a dream deferred? Ask those for whom the American dream remains an elusive nightmare. What happens happens to a dream deferred? Ask 40 million who still find themselves beneath the poverty level. What happens to a dream deferred? I guess my man Grandmaster Flash can give it to you like this. It's like a jungle. Sometimes it makes me wonder how I keep from going under. <laughs> it's like a jungle. Sometimes it makes me wonder how I keep from going under. Ask those who find themselves in schools that are factories of failure that feed the prison pipeline so that we now have in this country, what Michelle Alexander calls the new Jim Crow. What happens to a dream deferred? We are here to reclaim that dream. Why? Because we dare to believe with Dr. King from 47 years ago who against the backdrop of a negative nightmare of Jim Crow apartheid dare to declare we have a dream. So yes, we're reclaiming the dream. Why? Because dreams still come true. They come true because 1963 led to the passage of civil rights legislation in 1964. Dreams do come true because marching feet from Selma to Montgomery led to the passage of voting rights legislation. Dreams do come true because Rosa Parks sat, Jesse ran, Al Sharpton stood, Obama won, and now we can all fly. Dreams do come true because now in the White House we have Malia and Sasha playing in that White house because dreams do come true because if God be for us who can be against us dreams do come true because no weapon formed against us shall prosper dreams do come true and we shall overcome peace